Today I'm gonna to show you how to strengthen and mobilize this grip that makes the ring muscle up much easier. The reason why the false grip is really good, what it does is it allows us to have our hands on top of the ring, but our body can be underneath the ring. So then when I'm doing a muscle up on below, I pull up, my hands already on top, I can push down and then I can transition through and I'm easily on top of the ring. If I don't have a false grip and I try and get up, I have to try and turn over through that part, which is really tricky to do from a strength point of view. I mechanically, it's really hard because my body needs to go out and around. Whoops, and they fell over. Or I need to fill the gap with like a kip type movement. And that's what you'll see they do in CrossFit. So that strong false grip allows us to transition from below the ring to above the ring with control and consistency but it does need quite a bit of conditioning because it's a funny false position. Now the first thing we need to assess and work on is the flexibility. It's actually one of the things that can stop people getting a muscle up because they don't have flexibility to straighten the arms fully. They slip out of the false grip position and then don't make the muscle up because their false grip isn't strong enough when they get to the top. We come down on the floor into hands and knees, turn the hands up so palms are facing upwards, fingers pointing backwards, roughly in line with the shoulders. Now, if I bend my arms here, this is pretty comfortable, but if I straighten the arms and push into the floor and then even try and get some external rotation, so I'm gonna bring the crease of the elbows to the front. See that external rotation movement there? So there, I can feel a really good stretch. And the one thing I'm not doing to make it even harder is closing the fist yet. That makes it even harder again. So if I externally rotate, now if I try and get into a fist, notice I can't close my fingers properly. That's because I'm lacking range in my false grip. Same as if I go into a tight fist, so put the fingers together, go into a real tight fist position, put the back of the palms onto the floor in line with those shoulders, and then try and straighten the arms. I can't straighten my arms. So at the moment, I'm lacking flexibility in this false grip, and I'm gonna struggle to get straight arms and keep a really good grip on the rings. Now the rings do make it a little bit easier because I can turn outwards. I can go more into this position, which is easier if my hands are wider, but again, if I try and keep them shoulder width, my fingers wanna come apart. So check yours, see if you can go into that tight fist, see if you can put the back of the palm on the floor with the fingers pointed backwards, see if you can straighten the arms, and then ideally externally rotate and bring the crease of the elbow forwards. I can't. Now obviously the more time you spend in a false grip, the more comfortable you're gonna get, and the more your mobility is gonna improve. But if you do things like I do, and do loads and loads of handstands, that's the opposite movement. My body's really happy in a handstand, but it's not so happy in a false grip. In terms of stretches, my favorite is to make the fingers roll into a real tight fist, put the knuckles together, place the back of the hand on the floor, and then straighten the arms as much as possible. So if I'm here, tight fist, knuckles together, back of the palms on the floor, straighten the arms as much as possible. There's the stretch, hold for a few seconds, try and keep the fingers tucked in, in that tight fist position, and then come back open again. And then just do reps of that. So if you don't have much experience with the false grip position, I'll first play around with the ring around this height, roughly chest height, and we just wanna play with having our hand in the correct position. So I'm just gonna grab hold of the ring like that. So my palm's on top, but I need to make sure I have contact at this crease. So that crease there is in contact with the ring there. But I wanna slip off, so there's a gap here. I need to make sure that there's good contact all the time, but I'm still gripping the ring like that. So once I'm in that position, I'm now gonna see if I can get my elbow below the ring, so I'm directly down, but I still have that contact. Next, I'm gonna to start to load the position. So I'm gonna go into that false grip on both hands, make sure I've got that good connection. Then I'm gonna have my fists against my chest. So I've turned the rings in that way, like that. I'm gonna walk in and put a little bit of weight there. So I'm trying to hold into that strong false grip position, lean backwards, take a bit of weight into the hands, and then I'm gonna slowly straighten the arms. I'm gonna go back towards the row. Now, as I go into the row, I'm gonna to start to get to a point where this is hard to hold. I'm gonna run out of flexibility. But what I can do is I can turn the rings, which makes it easier to straighten the arms. And then I can reverse that movement back. Chest touches. Now, when I touch with the chest, I'm gonna make sure I still have that strong false grip. And then I'm gonna go back, turn the hands out again. So I can do repetitions of that row. Now obviously I can make this harder in a normal row technique, I can go lower, or I can make it easier by going the opposite direction. My main focus here is not the row, but on holding the false grip throughout the row. So you might have a super strong row, but a weak false grip. 
So stay in that easier position and just condition with lots of repetitions, making sure you're keeping that false grip position. Once I've built some strength, some conditioning, some mobility with those false grip rows and the mobility stretches, I'm gonna to start to condition the movement even more with a hanging position. Now the easiest position for most people to hang with is a bent position, so we're not running into those mobility restrictions. And if you are working towards a muscle up, you already have quite a strong chin up. So a bent arm hold halfway on the pathway of the chin up should be quite comfortable. So I'm gonna go into the false grip, make sure I have that good contact again on both sides. I wouldn't recommend wearing a watch, but I'm gonna do it. Bring the elbows in, which again makes it easier from a mobility point of view and a chin up point of view. So strong false grip, and then I'm just gonna lift up and hold there. So hang there for 10, 15, 20 seconds, making sure you're still maintaining that false grip. And then back down with control. And the hang is a useful drill that I can start to play with and fill gaps. So certain points of the movement is gonna be harder. Normally again, because of that mobility, but just from your chin up strength as well, you'll find certain parts are harder than others. But we need the full range of motion for the muscle up. The target in some weaker areas is gonna be good. So I can do exactly the same thing again, go into the hang, but now I'm slightly deeper in the chin up position. I can Attempt a straight arm position, but remember this one's the hardest from a mobility point of view So I will turn the rings out and see if I can maintain it. Now notice that I've closed the shoulder So doing this slightly is easier than being fully open in the shoulder Again because my flexibility is limited with the straight arms once I've spent some time on the hanging I can then work on the actual chin-up movement. So exactly the same as the rows. I want that strong false grip and what I'm actually gonna to do to start with is I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna keep my arms bent slightly and not go to a straight position. So half way up or just below, I'm gonna pull from here, chest touches, come to that point again and back again. So I can do repetitions there and I'm not running out of flexibility. I'm gonna do two or three of those and then I'm gonna try one to two repetitions where I try and challenge my flexibility, but I'm more than likely going to run out of false grip and lose my false grip as I go with these. So you're gonna to have to play around with challenging positions, but also trying to maintain the false grip as you go. So there, I've got two reps, but I can feel this right one especially is starting to slip out. Next, we need to start to learn how to transition from the bottom of the dip into our false grip. So from here, I'm gonna transition from this position round to the top of my false grip chin up that we was just going to a second ago, back to the bottom of my dip. So that's the transition for the muscle up. Now notice every time I go in to below the rings, I have a strong false grip position. But when I go back on top of the rings, I'm in a strong bottom of a dip. Now making that transition feel as smooth as possible and not losing position is really tricky to start with. So what will tend to happen, especially if you're using toe assist like I am to make the movement easier, I'm gonna to tend to go around the rings or I'm gonna move the rings out of the way, which is false or incorrect to what's gonna happen when I do the actual muscle up. So I need to be pushing down on the rings all time and I'm moving my body around the ring, but I'm keeping my body very, very close. I've actually got contact with the rings all the time. So notice the hands against my pecs, tracing the line of my pecs as I transition to facing upwards at the top of the chin up, to facing down at the bottom of the chin up. You're probably gonna need a few thousand repetitions of that for it to feel easy and not funky, and it's gonna happen smoothly when you do the muscle up but eventually we'll be looking at taking away the toe assist and doing an eccentric. So from that top of the dip to the bottom of the dip, through the transition, find the false grip to the top of the chin up and then back down. And that's a really good assessment, a good test that you're doing the right pathway, you're finding your false grip and you're mimicking everything that needs to happen on the way back up. The much harder version is a yo-yo, so coming to the bottom of the dip, going down a little bit into the false grip, and then pushing back again. 
Now that's pretty challenging, especially when you go to the point where your elbows are lower than your hands, because you're basically doing the hardest part of the muscle up, and you'll definitely find out where your gaps are there if you can't get back up. So don't complicate it too much. Work on some mobility before you do your muscle up exercises. Pick one to two of those strengthening exercises, whether it's the rows or the hangs, chin ups or the transitions. Refine the technique and just really work on that for reps and sets. As soon as that feels comfortable, move on to the next one. And then once you've done enough, the muscle up will be a piece of cake. I have muscle up programs in my app. If you're after coaching, check out my app or my website, links are down in the description. Let me know if you have any questions down below in the comments and I'll speak to you in the next one. Thanks guys.